In this video, we will talk about the inverse cosine function. In the figure to the left, we have the graph of y equals cosine of x. The domain of this function is the interval from negative infinity to positive infinity, and the range is the interval from negative 1 to positive 1 inclusive. Now, to find the inverse of a function, we need to interchange x and y. But the problem with the cosine function is that on the interval from negative infinity to positive infinity, this function is not a one-to-one -one function. This means that if we draw a horizontal line over the graph, then this graph will not pass the horizontal line test. This test tells us that if we draw a horizontal line, and if this line crosses the graph in more than a point, then the function does not have an inverse. So what we can say about the cosine function, that on the interval from negative infinity to positive infinity, this function does not have an inverse. Now, in the figure to the right, again we have the graph of the cosine function, and we know that the graphs of inverse functions are symmetric with respect to the line y equals x. So, if we take the graph of the cosine function, and we reflect it about y equals x, then this is the graph we get. But the problem is that this graph does not represent a function because it does not pass the vertical line test. This test tells us that if we draw a vertical line over a graph, and if this line crosses the graph in more than a point, then this graph does not represent a function. Then the question is, how can we define the inverse cosine function? To define the inverse cosine function, we need to restrict the domain of the cosine function to the interval from 0 to pi. So then, because we need the graph only from 0 to pi, I will go and erase everything to the left of 0 and to the right of pi. So now, here we have the graph of the cosine function on the interval from 0 to pi. And on this interval, the cosine function passes the horizontal line test, and this means that on this interval, the cosine function has an inverse. And this inverse is y equals inverse cosine of x. And now, if we reflect this graph about y equals x, then the graph of the inverse function will stretch from 0 to pi. Then I will go and erase everything below 0 and everything above pi. So here we have the graph of the inverse cosine function. The domain of this function is the interval from negative 1 to positive 1, and the range is the interval from 0 to pi. Now, here again we have the cosine function restricted on the interval from 0 to pi. Now, to write the inverse cosine function, we need to interchange or to swap x and y. So, in place of y, we will write x, and in place of x, we will write y. So, this is the inverse cosine function, and we just need to solve it for y. For this, we have two notations that we can use. One of them is y equals inverse cosine of x, and the other one is y equals arc cosine of x. Both these notations are widely used in different textbooks, and I will use the first notation. Now, let's see what we exactly find when we evaluate an inverse cosine function. In the function y equals cosine of x, x represents the angle, and y represents the value of the cosine function. But in the inverse cosine function, y represents the angle, and x represents the value of the cosine function. And here is something very important to remember. When we use the inverse cosine function to find an angle, this angle will be on the interval from 0 to pi. And we can see this interval from 0 to pi on the unit circle. Each time we will evaluate the inverse cosine function, we will get an angle on the interval from 0 to pi.
For example, if we want to evaluate inverse cosine of 1 over 2, then the result is pi over 3. And this is an angle on the interval from 0 to pi. Or let's say we want to evaluate inverse cosine of negative 1 half. Then the result will be 2 pi over 3. And this is also an angle on the interval from 0 to pi. Now you can try more examples using your calculator and just make sure that the number you use in parentheses is a number on the interval from negative 1 to positive 1. This is all I wanted to show you in this video about the inverse cosine function. Please subscribe and thank you for watching.